What's up everyone in the Daily Effect Boxing, you know what time it is. After big fights like this, I always like to give my opinion. Um, what a great fight between two warriors, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Um, this was a special fight and that's why I've, I've got some notes today that I'm going to run by. Otherwise, I will forget, um, you know, detailed things that I want to talk about. One of the best heavyweight fights I've seen for a very, very long time. Um, I don't think people understand when fighters say they're willing to die in the ring. A real fighter will speak like that, in my opinion. Um, the fighters that don't speak like that, they're not real fighters. Real fighters are willing to die in the ring. They are willing to put everything on the line and risk their life. And um, if you wanted to understand what we actually mean when we say we will actually, we're willing to die in the ring, then watch that fight again. Tyson Fury getting up after two knockdowns. Wilder getting up, getting up after knockdowns. Back and forth, back and forth. Both showed grit, both showed balls, both showed heart. And those are the things you can't teach in boxing. They're the things that I look for in a, in a fighter. Because you can't teach, you can give, I, I can teach him all the boxing skills in the world, give him all the knowledge in the world. But if you don't show what Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder showed last night, then you ain't going to last in this game. Um, Deontay Wilder can hold his head up high in my opinion um, what a chin he has to keep getting up to keep carrying on while looking like that just shows what a man he is and again Tyson Fury to keep getting up and, and fighting, I mean, he's been fighting. He's gone through a lot of things in his life. And it just shows in that ring. And I'm saying this, and I stand by this. If Wilder hit any other heavyweight with those shots that Tyson Fury took last night, they weren't going to, they wouldn't have got up. Trust me on that, they wouldn't have got up. Unbelievable chin from Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, for me, in my opinion, will be every heavyweight out there. He's just too big. He's too physically strong. He just, he just bullies you with his size. Not only that, he has the skill set. You know, the knowledge. He's been fighting from a, little, from a little kid, man. And that's one thing I think people have to respect. You know, um, well... As Tyson Fury likes to call it, he's the Gypsy King. You gotta, it's you gotta respect those kind of people, man. You know what I mean? The things they've gone through, the uh, the abuse, the racial abuse they get, is unreal. And you gotta remember, they do a lot for boxing. Um, the traveling community, they do a lot for boxing. They, the. As soon as they can walk, they've got gloves on. You know what I mean? So you've got to respect the traveling community and, and the things they've gone through, the things they have to fight through to be accepted in society. You know what I mean? I hold my hands up to them. And Tyson Fury keeps proving everyone wrong. Yeah, he might not have the looks of a Anthony Joshua. And, um, and that's why he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. You know, Anthony Joshua's a poster boy, a poster boy. You know, everyone loves him because of his looks. You know what I mean? But if if Joshua didn't have that, then you know what I mean. Um, I don't think anyone would be talking about Joshua because if you talk about boxing skills and boxing ability in itself, uh, then look no further than Tyson Fury. He's the best in the division. I don't think anyone can beat him. Anyone can beat him, and that's why I stand by. If you take Tyson Fury out of the equation. And Deontay Wilder's hit, hitting people with those shots. Hitting Joshua with those shots. Joshua ain't getting up. Joshua is not getting up. Trust me. 
So I, I have Tyson Fury as number one. I have Usyk as number two, obviously, because he's just won all the belts off Joshua. I have Wilder as number three. People go, Wilder as number three. Listen, Wilder, he's the only one that is facing the best of the best. And as I said, it's no shame in losing to Tyson Fury because all of those heavyweights out there will lose to Tyson Fury. So he's gone 40 something fights in his career and the only person that he's lost to is Tyson Fury. But in my opinion, every heavyweight out there loses to Tyson Fury. So does that make Deontay Wilder a bad fighter? No, it does not. Actually, he's got balls for even, you know, stepping in the ring three times with the best heavyweight in the division. You know what I mean? So a great fight. And they both should be proud of themselves for putting on um, a war of a fight. Um, the reason why I like, like Deontay Wilder, and people might laugh, but the reason why I like Deontay Wilder because... In the heavyweight division, I like drama, I like entertainment. And for me, Deontay Wilder is the only heavyweight out there, apart from Tyson Fury, he's the only heavyweight out there that brings that excitement, brings that entertainment, brings that drama. You never know what you're going to get with him. He's the only one that I would wake up for or stay up for until five o'clock in the morning just to see him fight. And the last time I had that kind of feeling with a heavyweight that I would stay up for is people like Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson. You know what I mean? He brings that kind of energy. So um, that's why I will continue to watch Deontay Wilder. Will he continue? I don't know. He's a multi, multi-millionaire. Will he have the motivation to continue? Malik Scott has done an interview. I just saw now. And um, it sounds like he is. Um, but they're going to have to make smart moves. Obviously, they won't fight Tyson Fury again. But there's other big fights out there for him. If he fights Anthony, Anthony Joshua, I, I see Deontay Wilder knocking Joshua Spark out because uh, Joshua don't have a chin like Tyson Fury has a chin. He gets hurt all the time. So if that one of his right hands uh, detonates on Anthony Joshua's chin, I can see him knocking him out. I can see him knocking out, knocking um, Andy Ruiz out. There's fights with Dillian White there, you know. So he's got big fights available. Once he's had his rest and he's had the time to clear his head and etc. There's no shame in losing to Tyson Fury. It takes two to tango and he put up, he put up, what a fight, what a fight. I'm going to show you my reaction. My, my bet was, my prediction was round three to five to Wilder and I almost got it. So you can imagine my reaction in round four when he knocked him down twice. Um... Yeah, I just want to mention Tyson Fury, Sugar Hill, what a trainer. Obviously, he's, um, um, his uncle is Emmanuel Stewart, and Emmanuel Stewart is my favourite trainer of all time. So um, he's cut from a different cloth, you know, the cronk, the cronk way of uh, the teaching, the knowledge, and the way of fighting. And I would just want to give him big respect to Sugar Hill because they had three fights and if you realize right Tyson Fury fought Deontay Wilder in three different ways the first fight he fought Wilder on the back foot second fight um he came forward as an aggressive fighter to knock him out and the third fight he put on more weight just to physically bully him and manhandle him on the ropes put his weight on him and and fatigue Deontay Wilder so that's three different game plans. You know what I mean? Deontay Wilder and Mallet Scott has obviously come in and assessed the first two fights and go, okay, we've had a taste of this um, Tyson Fury. We've had a taste of this Tyson Fury. So now we know what we're going to do. But I don't think they were prepared for um, this Tyson Fury, the third way, uh, different way of um, fighting. So um, big respect to Sugar Hill and Tyson Fury for, you know, putting that game plan together and it worked. And Sugar Hill in the corner, one, uh, one moment in a fight in between rounds, it was like deja vu. It's like going back in time. He actually looked like Emmanuel Stewart when he got angry and he was saying, get him out of there. And he, and he was swearing at him, swearing at Tyson Fury. 
that was a uh, world class man. I love trainers like that that just you know say it how it is, and that just reminded me of his uncle Emmanuel Stewart. Um, yeah, the the knockdowns. Whew. As I said, that that right hand, nobody's getting up from from that. Tyson Fury's got unbelievable chin. Um, the fatigue played a big part in Deontay Wilder. Obviously, when you're fatigued, you can't take punches as well. Um, I prefer Deontay Wilder lighter because he's more explosive. If you think about Deontay Wilder, he's very explosive. He punches with speed and that speed it delivers the power and that power switches off their lights. You know, he's more he's got more agility when he's lighter. If you look at all his career, he delivers the punches. They they come out of nowhere in blistering speed and 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 the fighters are gone. You know what I mean? Um I can understand why he put on that muscle, why he put on that weight, because he wanted, you know, to stand there with Tyson Fury if he was to, um, you know, rough him up and try and bully him. Obviously, he wanted to. I don't think they prepared for, fully for, you know, Tyson Fury doing that for the whole fight. Um, but because of how big Tyson Fury is, um, you know, obviously, that's the reason why they put on the weight. Um, to be able to counteract that but that did not suit Deontay Wilder after the first round even after the first round I was like oh those right hands look in slow motion man and I think that's because all that muscle mass and you know that weight I mean look look when Anthony Joshua has too much muscle he looks all robotic and everything so um, I don't think that was a good idea Deontay Wilder's been dropping bigger guys uh, his whole career so I don't think putting on muscle and weight would have made a, um, a huge um, difference uh, to the outcome of the fight. I think that just gassed him out too quickly. Um, he had, yeah, he had no energy, and obviously Tyson Fury with that game plan of leaning on him and putting all his weight on him, roughing him up, um, that added to gassing him out more quickly um, because he had that extra muscle mass and that extra weight. So I don't think that was a good idea. Um, if Deontay Wilder decides to fight again, he needs to go back to how he used to be, less muscle mass, where he's more explosive. Um, that's the Deontay Wilder I like to see. Um, Wilder's defense. I want to talk about that because I love Malik Scott. I think he's got a good boxing brain. Um, but I didn't see any difference um, in this fight from the last fight as in he was what you saw it in glimpses like when he come out in round one and round two he was jabbing well to the body and they were meaty shots as well you could see that Tyson Fury didn't like the feel of those he was trying to chop down the body first so he did that but once he gassed out all that game plan went out the window I don't like Deontay Wilder's defense um people say you can't teach him anything at this age but you know <sighs> I like to think that I could teach him something because the way he defends punches is not good, man. Like the simple things of trying to, you know, you know, defend a jab, just something as simple as that. Um, that needs to be drilled and taught on a daily basis, man. And then, you know, transfer that into the fight. You can't just be trying to knock someone out and then leaving yourself open and then going back to the ropes with no defense and no, no intelligence behind you know, there's one thing backing up and then there's another thing backing up with intelligence. And he wasn't backing up with intelligence. He was just backing up, allowing Tyson Fury to come to him. And it was actually your heart's in your mouth because you're like, he can get knocked out at any moment. So um, he needs, if he's going to fight again, he needs, to, he needs to get that defense right because he's got the punching power. Unbelievable. I've never seen punching power like this in my life where he can just drop you with one punch as he's shown in the fourth round where that right hand just come out of nowhere, bang, and drop Tyson Fury. But he needs to sort out um, his defense. A great fight, unbelievable fight. Tyson Fury, the best in the division. The, Tyson Fury's toughest fight, I believe, would only be against Usyk. Only because Usyk is a southpaw. Yes, he's smaller. 
but he constantly keeps moving for 12 rounds. And I think that could be a problem for Tyson Fury. I'm not saying he would beat Tyson Fury. I'm just saying he'd he give Tyson Fury his hardest fight based on those attributes. And because Tyson Fury stands tall a lot of the time, those whipping shots, those blind-like um, shots that I like to say, call um, from Usyk could give uh, Tyson Fury some problems and, and rock his boots. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that would be his toughest fight. As I said, I don't think any other heavyweight would beat Tyson Fury. And, and Deontay Wilder, for that reason, can hold his head up high because if Joshua was to fight him or any other heavyweight to fight, was to fight him, the same outcome would happen. In, in that I, I believe the same outcome would happen. You know what I mean? Um, if Joshua went in with Tyson Fury, I reckon Tyson Fury would get Joshua out there earlier than he got out Deontay Wilder. Um, what can I say? A beautiful heavyweight fight. So what we're left with now is a situation where you've got Dillian White fighting Otten Wallin and obviously... Um, the WBC president has ordered, you know, well, providing Dillian White wins, he took, he will fight Tyson Fury next. Um, obviously, that, that will happen because otherwise you'll be sitting around doing nothing. And plus, Joshua's got his rematch clause and he's activated it against Usyk. That'll probably be sometime early next year so i say the winner of tyson fury versus let's say dillian white if he comes through um wallin winner of joshua usick then finally finally we'll see an undisputed fight um probably after the summer of 2022 and in the meantime deontay wilder lick your wounds Assess where everything went wrong. Don't be that weight again. That does not suit you. And then, just to announce yourself again, fight someone like um, Andy Ruiz. He'd probably be the only one probably um, creditable and available to fight. Um, winning devastation, devastating fashion. You're still one of the best heavyweights, in my opinion, to watch. You bring excitement, entertainment. You have me off the edge of my seat every single time. Um, it's unfortunate you just have to fight Tyson Fury, who, in my opinion, is um, the best heavyweight on the planet. And I don't see anyone beating him. This fight will go down in history. Is in the top 10 could you stretch it to top five? But let's say you put it in top 10 of best heavyweight fights of all time. Um, you both should be proud of yourself. Tyson Fury, you've done it again. Um, John Wilder, you're a freaking soldier. Until next time, everyone.